What is going on, guys? Back to our EverQuest Enchanter Adventures. Wrecked you here. Thank you so much for joining me. Now, today I want to make a quick video and talk about using our Goblin Gazoogi Ring for that instant charm break so that we can get mobs as low as possible so that we don't have to waste our mana on big blasts to be able to kill them or dots or anything like that. Our goal when we're charming and we're charm fighting, and the whole reason why the GGR here, the Goblin Gazoogi Ring, is so powerful, is that instead of having to cast a spell to break our charm, which can take three or four seconds or more or less, we have an instant invisibility spell here that we can cast and break that charm instantly which allows us then to be able to plan their hit points a little bit lower. If you're casting the invisibility, you're usually trying to cast around 5 or 10% hit points, and sometimes that mob will get killed while you're casting, so you'll lose that experience that you would have had. And that's why the Goblin Gazoogi Ring is here is so powerful. Not only you get that kill every time without losing experience, but you can save a lot of mana by breaking it at 1% health instead of 10% health. Um, or having them die before you get it broken. So let's go ahead and walk through the hotkeys here. Now there's a few very important pieces to this as far as how you set up your hotkeys. That'll be completely just dependent on you, I guess, on how you like it. Let me change the background color so you maybe see this a little better. Okay, so we have a few things. First off, we obviously have, I put my root at the first spell slot. This gives it an instant global cooldown when I use my alliance on our Rod of Insidious Glamour. And that's our global cooldown as you see me use after every spell cast. I will, I have this hot keyed as number nine on my keypad for the one on the hot bar here. And that will instantly cast that alliance. So that's an important one. Hot key your global cooldown, whatever you're using. If you're using a Rod of Insidious Glamour or you got a Goblin Skull Earring or whatever it may be, that is one hot key. Now I also have my Goblin Kazugi Ring hot keyed at number zero. So if you go into our keys, you can go to hot bar one, you can see hot button one is nine, and then hot button six is zero. So here's one and six. So those are my two hot keys there. And like I said, I have root as number one. I have select myself with the U key. So when I press U, it'll select myself. And then lastly, I have the tilde key, which allows me to go between our last two targets. So you can see I'm switching between that Pyrgalm and me with that one click of the button. Now that right there is pretty much the extent of our hotkeys needed for this. Um, but what you see probably happens in a flash of a second, uh, those four or five keys being pressed. Now the whole idea again is we want our mobs to get down below 5% where it's going to be a blast of like our Anarchy, one of our lower DDs, a level 34 DD, only 160 mana, instead of having to spend 220 to finish the mobs off. So we save 60 each mob there if we get them down low enough. So when that mob if it's your pet or the enemy gets below that certain criteria point for that one blast, we want to instantly break that charm and we want to lock everything down so that we don't get hit. So we're going to have some mobs popping up here. The entrance is about to spawn on us, um, I think in like a minute or so. And we will do a little practice run. So ideally what's going to happen here is let's say we have these two mobs straight ahead, the two pyre golems. And when it's the same mob, it's kind of harder to show you because you don't see the actual target switch like I am right now. So we have one mob. We'll cast this just to show. We got pops there. <laughs> Let's just hold on on them. We'll do the two here. Okay, so we'll have these two here fight, the two bottomless feasters. And when they get below, what we're going to do right at that point, I'm watching their hit points. Once it hits 5%, whichever one hits 5%, I switch to my pet. I then switch to me. With the U key, I cast instant invisibility. We just have to have yourself selected or the target selected if you want to cast it. I will press zero for that hot key of GGR. I will press nine for that hot key of my uh, uh, instant global cooldown. I will press the tilde key to switch to who, the mob that was my pet. I will press one to root that mob. And then they're both locked down and you can kind of deal with it from there. So again, 
we're going to select our pet before the break. We're going to instantly switch to our cells with the U key. We're going to press the zero key to use our GGR to break charm. We're going to press the nine key to instantly cool down that global cooldown. We're going to press the tilde key, which will switch the target to what was my pet instead of myself. And then we're going to cast root on that pet. And then we just blast them down as usual. So that is an ex explanation of what's happening here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you guys live action here. So we want both of those guys selected, obviously. We're going to get down a little closer here, just in case. I'm going to go with an area effect mez, lock them down. And, you know, if you've ever been to Howling Stone, you know you do not want to fight them on the east side, which is over there. They got a little pather. I'm going to go ahead and get both of these locked in, tashing and rooting both. And then I will pet one. And right there, if you are rooting, like right now I'm using the level 4 root. It might have been a good idea for me to use a higher level root. <gasps> Luckily, the one that broke was my pet. <laughs> oh, you gotta tell him to attack, don't you? What's that? It's called a feaster, buddy. And now I'm just gonna sit back up here, make sure I'm not too high up on these stairs because those golems will pop. And I'm going to sit back and again, watching their hit points. Now, if you're using, if you're on blue or another server, you might have a UI that gives you a little bit better, like, representation of hit points that are there. Right here, I have to hover over their life hit points. And I'm constantly pushing C because we don't have a pet window yet on green. Um, just so I can see which one's my mob and which one isn't. The one that's amiably, that is going to be my pet. And the one that scowls at me, that's going to be the bad guy. So here we're again, we're watching the fight. We're trying to keep it very even. Now you can blast them to even out, but that's typically going to waste a lot of mana. I will use slows. So we have our high slow and we have our low slow. And the low slow saves a lot of mana. So we only use that pretty much, unless we're really fighting a really big mob or something, then we're just going to use that, that slow. So you're about, I mean, not that's not too bad, 13% difference. So that's about a blast difference. We could slow, but we'll just keep it because they might even out. You don't want to slow them, and then the one that gets slowed gets destroyed, and all of a sudden your pet has a lot of hit points. You want to make sure you're trying to manage as much as possible. Um, so if it's like 20-25% difference in hit points as we're fighting, then I will slow around 50% health just so they can even up without me wasting too much. I also, again, use my level 4 roots just so I can manage things a little bit better. I like the, the, the short la, um, time timeline on that because you only get 25 seconds. If I have like a 3 minute root and I want to use that enemy as a pet for the next mob or a pop or something, you can't do that because the root will last another 2 minutes. So you want to, I like to use that low root that allows me to really manage mobs a little bit more. So I'm casting that root every about 25%. My last root here on this guy is at 10 per 13%. So now we're watching, we see 25 and 11. When this guy right here, this bad guy gets below five, I'm switching to the enemy, then myself, and then we do the chain. Here we go. There we go. That was those keys that I literally gave you or showed you in one quick succession. You can see it happens under a second and then now we get 100% on both mobs. Now this guy here had quite a bit more hit points than we want. He's going to be three blasts, so that's quite a bit more mana than I wanted to use. Oh, I guess he's going to only be two because he's a little bit lower, it looks like. Nice. So again, just sitting here waiting, and we'll finish this guy off, get our 200% experience kills, and that is the rotation. As an enchanter, you really, really... Oh my god, see right there, wasted mana. Uh, really want to get that down because you're going to, again, you're going to increase your experience gain. It's much more manageable and feasible and nothing's going to, you know, really cause you too much trouble. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed this one. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out. This was a common question I got because, you know, while you're watching my videos, you don't actually see those key binds and what I'm pushing and it happens in under a second. And that's actually four, five, six keys sometimes. And it took me a little bit to get used to that, but I am able to now just kind of muscle memory. And of course, hot key your keys however you want. That's going to be best for how you play. That's just how I kind of set up my keys in my hands while I'm doing this polling. 
So guys, once again, thank you so much for joining me. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. I will see you in the next one.